Hello and welcome to Prime TV's Amsa Dotor. I'm Alicia Fernandez. Well, today is a very special day. Today is the National Doctors' Day. Indeed, a very special day. As we often say, a doctor is near to a god to all of us. But when today we are discussing about this particular day, indeed, it's a matter of great honor and privilege to have with us the guest for today, who is Professor Dr. Shivanand Bandekar, who is the Dean of GMC. Hello, Doctor. Welcome to Prime TV. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you. Doctor, to begin with, today is a very special day. It's your day, <laughs> and there's a n number of doctors who have been working tirelessly uh, in and around the entire nation. To so, to begin with, my first question to you is: Could you please tell us about uh, in Goa right now? What are the majority of uh, health problems that are being faced? Goa has got a very unique uh, problem that is high incidence of diabetes, that is sugar. then the high incidence of cardiac disease that is we are seeing some young people getting heart attacks and myocardial infarcts and uh, other things like uh, breast cancer is on rise and uh, cancer is also on rise other types of cancers so basically our uh, habits food habits our uh, um, you know kind of uh, living standards have changed and that is the reason that we are seeing a change in the kind of diseases across the state of goa so also when we see a very closer look at the entire uh, broader perspective about you know this various changes that are taking place so one may be a lifestyle so you think the way how we are functioning right now is not up to the mark uh in what respect uh, i you are the causes re reaching out to this particular as you mentioned there are this three majority of things yeah. which are there so do you think what are the major causes for this no people actually are not concentrating on their uh, habits you know because mm -hmm. even if uh, somebody is busy he should see that he eats a proper balanced diet he doesn't eat uh, junk food or he doesn't get into the habits of you know just rushing through the food habits because finally if you ask me what is wealth wealth is your health so i would go by this statement because i have seen people spending lakhs and crores on their health once they fall sick so if you can maintain your health properly i'm telling you are rich by so many lakhs so many crores so absolutely people must understand the concept called as wellness that wellness concept is coming where you think of having habits of preventive aspects i'm telling you many of my patients whom i i do lot of major orthopedic operation and we see them uh, hypertensive because just because of silly things like they are take a uh, work place tensions their habits are bad they eat junk food and when we correct them the whole hypertension falls in place and they don't even need medicines so there are ways how you can make yourself healthy so i feel need a little bit of discipline yeah, you need a disciplined life and you should also see that even once or twice indiscipline is okay but not every day what i'm trying to say is you should have that kind of a value for your health yes doctor you have been now seeing a lot of uh, maybe uh, cases coming in uh, to you at gmc or in general so but when you see a very closer look at this entire scenario how and what you would consider is you know on a rise in terms of you know which is the age group which is giving a lot of problems at the moment mostly at the moment we see people with increase in the incidence of stroke now stroke is a fallout of again diabetes and hypertension mm -hmm. if you don't control your uh, sugars if you don't control your pressure uh, properly don't monitor them so last full month mm -hmm. we have observed a hypertension month where we created lot of awareness we created cmes we went to old age homes we checked we did screening we found out new hypertensive patients we told them how to have a normal pressure so if these things are taken care i feel and uh, these are seen in little bit of elderly not necessarily even now we are getting hypertensive patients at very young age okay very very rare to have hypertension at young age what is the youngest that you all have come across we have got up to, even at 27 years oh okay very severe hypertension oh so this is also existing something new that we are seeing mm -hmm. so i i personally feel that 
that awareness that I should go and check myself whether I'm okay at least once in a year or twice in a year other than getting into surprises you know many times you get patients admitted in the ward never check the sugars and they are now already 60 and the sugars is somewhere 500 fasting so do uh, doctor if you could tell us like what is the best age that you know you should start this checkups like you know at a re regular intervals or what what is the best time that you have to go in for for, uh, for a ladies it is different for men it is different and for ladies i would consider from age of 45 to 50 mm -hmm. one should be doing regular checkups you will ask me why 45 50 because that is the time they get into premenopause and then hormonal imbalance a lot of symptoms come so, a lot of physiology, body physiology changes at that age. So, one should do every yearly one's test like you do a routine test like your kidney function, liver function, then sugars and lipid profiles and all that you should do. See that they are all in normal range and once in a while maybe you can check your blood pressure with your family doctor. That's enough mm -hmm. and maintain your file. Maybe once in a year, huh? I'm not asking for too much. Mm. And in men, definitely 55 onwards, I would consider as a real significant age because at 60 you become senior citizen. And at senior citizen, many people have been detected hypertensive, many of them have kidney issues, many of them have prostate issues. So all that can be prevented if you start doing your uh, checkups at an uh, early age. Now, also a majority of uh, problem that comes in now is that for the younger age with their mobile phones. Yes. So, uh, a lot of us need, you know, our working class, or be it even kids for that matter. The posture has a majority of problem that we're dealing with. So, how would, what would you advise to the people I, watching? I'm really worried about these mobile phones. Forget the, the ill effects of the content mm -hmm. which is there in that. but. Also, the major issue is uh, posture and then we call it as ergonomics. It's a new science which has come up. The ergonomics means at uh, workplace also, like how you are sitting and I am sitting. There is something called a scientific chair, scientific table. Okay. So that you don't, uh, you know, uh, stress your spine, you don't stress your hips and all. And then you don't get into degeneration early. Now, we, are start we have started getting young people with juvenile cervical spondylosis. Earlier, when I started my career as an orthopedician, we used to see spondylosis means age above 50. Yeah. You could see those osteophytes in the x-ray. Now we see because all the time you keep your neck flexed and then you are on your own. Yeah. And these people have multiple problems like neck pain, giddiness and it's really worrisome. So my frank advice is, I don't know what is there in mobile. I have also a mobile, but we use it judiciously only for the right reasons. So people, young generation should realize that they should can spend more time on something else. Because, and if at all they are forced to work on mobile, then they should ergonomically use the mobile. Ergonomics means what? Your cervical spine, if it stays in neutral position, it doesn't suffer a degeneration. If it is flexed or it is extended, it suffers degeneration. So that is ergonomics for cervical. There is any uh, rule or something or there's something that you want to inform the people how we can, you know, avoid it. We need to take yeah. breaks. Avoid it means if you keep your neck bent more than one hour continuously, then it definitely the muscles try to stabilize it. After some time, muscles get fatigued and then the whole brunt comes on the vertebrae. Okay. And these vertebrae start growing. That's called as osteophytes. So that is an instability position. So I would advise them, see that you don't keep your neck flexed or, flexed or extended continuously because you are putting your neck into unstable position. And you try and keep, at least in between, you should keep your neck straight so that it remains neutral, no stress on the vertebral column. Okay, doctor, I think there's a lot of things that we all need to take care of, especially when we have mobile phones in the Absolutely. center. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And then this is the science of ergonomics, which is a new science. Huh? Mm -hmm. Now, there are all these companies like Godrej and big companies which make office furnitures. They are designing furniture as per the ergonomics. Okay, depending upon their yes. body yeah. posture. Of course, because I see a lot of tech people, young ladies, young girls and then uh, boys who start uh, their career on laptop all the time but they really suffer yeah because the stress level is also there plus you have more into the work and that's what happens uh, that is what has to go because again here i would say you may earn 
thousands and lakhs, but you will spend on your health again. So health is wealth. Definitely, health is definitely wealth. Uh, doctor, one more important question that we would want to know from you is, uh, you have um, met a lot of patients mm. and you know, like they all, I know it's very difficult, but uh, when it comes to a mother to choose between the two kids, it's too difficult to choose between any one of them. But in terms of you, as what is that one particular case that you remember, like which is the, like you know, a landmark case in your uh, journey so far? See, as far as um, I'm concerned in my career, I'm almost now th three decades in my profession and I must have done all kinds of operations, not try to show off, but of I am an orthopedic surgeon who has done all of orthopedic procedures and many were rewarding, sometimes depressing because you couldn't do much as you cannot fight with nature and you can't be God or a demigod. You have to use your science. but. There was one patient where we re-implanted. We re-implanted almost the, the leg was cut and we put it back, we sutured all the vessels and that was taken up. Because I know the best of the artificial limb could not give you the ant crawling sensation on your body. It is your own limb if you can preserve and that is my job, you know, traumatic amputations to re-implant is a big thing that I remember and I have done those operations and I am happy about it because these operations really because one even the small vessel is intact I have preserved the limbs so this is this is one area where I find myself very satisfied mm. because you could save somebody from getting disabled actually and I think also you've been very closely working with Soto Yes. Where, if you could just tell our audience what is SOTO and how you know it has been. SOTO is a new concept where we give organs to the patients who are on end stage. And in Goa, <coughs> kidney failures are rising. I don't know, maybe because of diabetes, hypertension again. I, I mean, right now I have about 61 patients on wait list for kidney. We have done almost 21 kidney transplants. We have done uh, 10 cadaveric transplants and uh, we do it all free. And this is done in Goa? Goa, Goa Medical College. Uh, one transplant, if you do it in private, it will cost you nothing less than 15 to 20 lakhs. We have done it free and not only this, our government gives immunosuppressants throughout the life. Immunosuppressants is the costly therapy after the transplant. So what I feel the SOTO has to be very, very friendly with uh, patients who require organs because you can't live with dialysis for long. You know, dialysis is very, very painful condition. It has to be used as a stopgap arrangement. Ultimately, we encourage people to go for a transplant. Either you take from your siblings, from your family, that is known as living donor. And if you don't have anybody to give you kidney, then you have to wait till you get it from the cadaveric. The cadaveric uh, program was started by us under SOTO. And so far, I think we got about five patients who have donated their whole body. So we have given liver, we have given heart, we have given uh, kidneys. So such beneficiaries were 10. So 10 kidneys were given to those patients who have no, you know, close relatives to donate. But they got a kidney. They're living their life. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. You know, I'm telling you, the donors, we made them heroes. We gave them a uh, lot of, uh, you know, appreciation. These donors were brain dead. So there's something called as brain dead. Now, this kind of concepts have come now, basically because of organ donation. Earlier, dead means heart has to stop. But brain dead is heart still functions. But we know that patient is going to die within two days and then his heart will stop after two days. So during that period, you have to harvest the organs, provided there is a consent from the patient. That is all legal. Okay. It is nothing illegal. And in this process, SOTO has been doing very well. And I'm happy to tell you that this year, Goa Medical College is also trying to imp uh, start a liver transplant program. Yeah, once we get our uh, gastroenterology in place, we will start a liver transplant program. And that will really help because in Goa, liver diseases are on rise. Mm -hmm. A lot of people, you know, they have very, uh, very, very pleasurable evenings and then the end result is uh, liver takes the toll on their uh, life. So, we want to start liver program. 
heart transplants we give heart to the other state okay so yeah, that but, uh, yeah but that is also also we have saved three people by giving heart wow really and then one of the patients was he was told in reliance hospital mumbai that you will if you don't get heart within 2 days you cannot survive and to his good luck he got heart from goa very nice and he has sent his video after heart transplant now right now is in us and he says i got a new life so this is a power of uh, organ donation this is a power of soto wow very nice doctor i think uh, such uh, initiatives are definitely taking it to a different step or either absolutely so also doctor if you could tell us now uh, looking at the entire scenario uh, do you think gmc is equipped to you know take all kinds of patients and treat all kinds of diseases in goa yeah see what happens is science is developing hmm. and gmc basic function is a medical college we create doctors hmm. and we produce doctors every year 180 mbbs we produce 132 post graduates and now i am going to produce super specialist <laughs> to the tune of 18 super specialist every year so our focus is to give optimum facility but our vision of our honorable health minister is so good that he wants to create some centers of excellence now in par with the corporate uh, society or in par with people uh, in par with uh, hospitals like hinduja just lok aims you know where you get the best facility for a poor patient mm. their poor patients cannot go because they have to pay through their nose but government of goa has got a vision to create now we are creating three centers of excellence one is gastroenterology one is skull base surgery and the third one is robotic surgery now these three centers of excellence will cater to the poorest of poor without paying a single paisa and i would consider as a big gift to the society from goa medical college on this doctors day oh indeed and i would never retire from this doing this services to the uh, society so this is what i feel is the best concept that goa medical has got indeed i think it's helping lives and it's helping people more importantly that is what is looking forward to uh, doctor also now when you uh, see uh, a lot of uh, doctors are constantly on the job they are doing a lot of things including you doctor so what are the things you all keep in mind as doctors now watching you there are a lot of doctors who are watching you as well today so what are the things you all keep in mind to take care of your health see we actually tend to neglect because for us the happiness is my today i have done bilateral knee replacement my happiness was to get that knee correct i want my patient to walk tomorrow in that happiness i have not had my lunch i did not have proper water intake also so but somehow i think their blessings help us <laughs> the patient's <laughs> blessings help us and we need to take care i also believe that we need to take care i'll tell you the story of one cardiologist i don't want to take his name in mumbai he was so famous but he neglected himself and he died of heart attack he was advised by the another cardiologist you better take uh, cavg that is open heart surgery get your coronary is bypassed and then you will survive he did not take care and one day he got a massive cardiac attack heart attack so this also is seen in doctors but you know there is always a doctor when he looks at himself he will always at back of his mind he will also have a are i should take care i should take proper diet there are some uh, many doctors who are very disciplined i appreciate them in spite of the busy schedule they maintain their health very well and i appreciate them and every doctor should follow those doctors who really are disciplined and they don't even e- eat something more than 10 calories extra so they are Uh, calorie intake their activities and their kind of uh, uh, exercise therapy and all you should appreciate mm-hmm. and this is what but it is not with 100% doctors some doctors are too busy some doctors tend to neglect and some doctors uh just being carefree and uh, with their life but my advice to all doctors today is that you please be disciplined at least after certain age take care of your health have a balanced diet do some exercises and do uh, uh, you know routine checkups at periodically 
definitely doctor i think uh, this is something which uh, everybody needs to take care of. and finally it's the doctors day and uh, today's day we want to salute all the doctors over here including dr dean who have been doing amazing job i at the goa medical college and i think it is growing to leaps and bounds with the facilities that it has and uh, with under your guidance maybe it will be you know, to a different level from the years to come it is a teamwork alisha i i always take my hods together and all my doctors are with me if somebody needs my help i am there and when we need their help we are, we call them so goa medical college is a big teamwork and you need a team leader who can take everybody together and finally create a miraculous results and give good services to people of goa read Thank you so much doctor for taking time off and coming to our studio it was great having you here and we on the entire goa we want to say a huge thank you to you on this national doctors day thank you so much once again doctor thank you thank you well on this note we come to an end of this episode keep watching your favorite channel prime keep watching prime